Some of the Muslims were taking exception to that. One of them ran across a series of some books that were 150 years old from one of the scholars in India who had developed this whole thing to respond back to those who were converting Muslims to Christianity. So this one, he takes it, and it was a good orator, a good speaker, and a big guy on top of that. And he starts going after them and turning them around in their tracks. They couldn't wait to run away from this guy. But then it turns into debates, and then it becomes like a public thing, and then it becomes like, okay, half the room will be filled up with Christians, the other half will be filled up with Muslims. Huh? The Christians came. Sometimes more Christians than the Muslims. And this was the case down in Louisiana. And they brought the man all the way from South Africa to Louisiana. And they had a debate. It became very famous. They made videotapes, spread it all over the world. And you know which one I'm talking about, don't you? You no doubt in your mind what I'm talking about. How many of you ever been to Lafayette, Louisiana? Huh? Never. I have. I've been in those little villages, those little towns there, and I've talked to the people, the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Only question I had was, what was your relationship before and after the debate? What was the relationship, Muslims and Christians, before this debate? It was good. <coughs> Better than it was between, let us say, for instance, the Catholics and the Protestants, because they were mostly Louisiana is Catholic. They even have Catholic law still there today. It's the only state in the United States that does not have counties, it has parishes. And parishes are associated with the Catholic Church till this day. And they under the structure of their constitution is more on the French law than it is on British. And again, I'm going to repeat, that's in Louisiana only. So in that state, where the Muslims had a better chance, with the Protestants for sure, after the debate, they hated them until this day. I was there right after the Hurricane Katrina, and I talked with the people about this. Some of the refugees that had left from it, we discussed some of these things in passing. I didn't let them know that that was a big issue, that I was you know, just dialoguing, talking, but I wanted to find out. I talked to two people on two different occasions, once when I was in Hodge and the other when I was down after Katrina, who were there at the debate. And I asked them, what was the response of the people? When it started out, we could talk to them easily. After I, afterwards, everybody was polarized. You know what polarized means? It has nothing to do with the North Pole, South Pole. It's talking about the poles of a magnet. You're attracted to each other and away from them. Each of the communities that I've visited where they've done these kind of debates suffers more than it gains. That's why I refuse to do the debates. Not because I don't think I can beat somebody talking. <laughs> I got no problem doing that. But because I know Allah is not going to like it. And when I was here the last time down in Sydney, that's exactly what they tried to start out with. And I told them I wouldn't even come over here if they were going to do that. The reason I came was to keep them from doing that. They were going to get somebody else to do this debate stuff. And it was going to be real serious. The plan was to bring in three of the top Christian guys and put one of the Muslims from America up against them. And then have a judge sit and listen to the whole thing and make a final judgment. It was going to be broadcast and everything. What do you think would have happened after that? 
Well, I got news for you. It would have been a huge collision because only a month later, two months, wasn't it? Seven, seven. Remember that? Remember what happened in England? That was just two months later. Do you have any idea how bad the Muslims would have looked in all of Australia? You'd probably all be living in a refugee camp right now. Do you think I'm joking, huh? Alhamdulillah, we were able to avert that. What I told them was, we'll come and we will just talk about the nice things of Islam. They said, we've got this one guy that now we've already started. He wants to do it. I said, only if it's a dialogue. He finally agreed to a dialogue. Dialogue means, die means two, by the way. Log, speak. Dialogue. So, okay. And the deal is, we'll each talk about the good things that we have that will contribute to the community and the future of our children. Let's build it on that and go for it. And that was the premise from all the way back in November, December, like that, all the way up till I came here in May or June of, the end of May or whatever it was of that year. And subhanAllah, everything went so smooth the whole time I was here because we kept focus on that one thing. Talk about the good of what we both have. And some of you heard of Fred Niles? He was one of those that I went and spoke to and he turned around 180 degrees and he was looking actually positive toward Muslims and toward Islam. He even, while we did Salah, he stood behind us and he was praying like this and crying. And I went to him afterwards and he was very positive toward Islam. Didn't last, as you well know what happened right after that. But we tried, and then what happened? On that last event, on the last day, the one representing the Christians came and broke his word on every point. Said he wasn't going to do it, he did it. Said he would do this or that, he didn't do it. Each thing that he said, he did the opposite of. And the Muslims had worked closely with him. Ask him, go to Sydney and ask him. Well, they did. They had a barbecue for the, for the youth and they brought them over and fed them. They played soccer with them. They even brought a well-known soccer player and let them meet him, get autographs, that kind of thing. Nice. But when he got up on the stage, he had a Quran and a Bible in his hand. Already I know it's a problem. You know why? You see me with anything up here? What well, I need that for? If I need to open a book and read out of it, I don't need to be giving a speech about it, do I? Do I? No, <laughs> you don't need to be looking up something if you're going to give a talk. You either know it or you don't. Why he's got both books? Because he's going to use it as props to show people. You know what the Bible says. This is what Christians do. You know what the Quran said. And like, oh, one of those deals. We had exactly 30 minutes each. He said he needed more time. I said, let him have some of my time. It's all right. Give him five minutes of mine. I'll talk 25. Let him talk 35. I don't care. It's be all right. But one thing I asked the moderator to do, when you get up there, read this. It says, it's not a debate. We're not here to attack each other's religion. We're here to talk about the positive future for our youth and the good that we have and let people see what it is and leave it at that. When he started speaking, he didn't wait two seconds before he was saying really bad things against Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, misquoting the Quran, Talking about hadith I didn't ever hear of before. I'm sure that they're hadith because I could see where he got them from. He had with him Arab Christians sitting right there, feeding him like spoon feeding, you know? Say this, say that. They had been brainwashing him for two weeks just for this purpose. And he came down, bam, bam, bam. And for one whole hour, he used up all the time. The brothers asked me, aren't you going to make any notes? I said, for what? I said, Joe, you can just say he did it. I said, this is a debate. We're not going to do it. After our break, when we came back in, I told them, I said, there's no point in talking. They said, go ahead and try anyway. I said, well, you know, most of the people are leaving. 
But I went up on the stage <clears throat> and I told him that I was real happy to be here in Australia. I always wanted to get to see kangaroos and guys fighting crocodiles and figure out how guys can hang on to the end of the globe like you guys do down here. I was trying to figure out how you didn't fall off, you know? Because I wanted them to relax a little bit, laugh it up and, and relax because there's no way I can come in and pick up after what he did. Then I did, the only thing I could think to do is just talk about my trip since I've been there and the good things that I saw from the Christians and the Muslims working together. And I mentioned the name of the people that they knew, even one of them, from the Uniting Methodist Church, is that what they call it? We have United, they have Uniting, I think, here, yeah? Well, this one, at the end of his speech, he said, I'm calling for the reinstitution of the Sharia of Islam. If we had it in Christianity, I would call for it. We don't have it. They do, and we need it. This is what he said. I said, I don't need to give a speech after that guy. That's great. <laughs> I'll just say amen and <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> if I had to call for it, they probably wouldn't let me go home. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, we had a lot of good things. Then I just pointed to him and I said, the only disappointment I've had is sitting in that chair right there. <laughs> because before we came out here, and what we talked about the last six months was what you heard the moderator say. This was not to be a debate. This was not to cut each other down. This was not to put anybody down. All it was was to show the good that we had from both sides so that our youth can find things that they can work together on to build the future here in Australia. That was our topic, if you remember. In the meantime, I checked him out because I never took my finger off of his face. I just kept pointing to him. When I turned and looked at him, man, he was red-faced and looking down. So I said, so I'm not going to respond to his misconceptions, misunderstandings, misquotes from his book, misquotes from our book. Instead, I'm just going to tell you the three words I came out here to tell you about, and then I'm going to go. In case you didn't figure it out, I just responded to everything he said in one sentence. So... I gave him the meaning of the word Islam, the word of the Muslim, the word Allah. I have four words because I talked about the Quran. What does it actually mean? That was it. And I felt like, well, you know, I did my job. I'll go. A guy came up on the stage. And I was telling him, you know, you got to get off the stage. You can't come up here because the, the people milling around and everything. And you don't know who's got what kind of agenda going on in their head. It wasn't a Muslim, you know. And he said, but I want to make Shahada. I said, what? They get him on the stage. <laughs> and he did his Shahada. A young man, I think he was in the Australian Navy or something, was behind us on the bleacher area over there. And he said, I want to as well. And he entered Islam. Then there were some girls, three, right over in the area, right over there. That we took the microphone over to them, and they did Shahada. Now, they're making Shahada after this guy insulted Islam every way he could think to do it. And it's not because of me. But I guarantee you, if I would have done what was inside of me to do, that would have been a big problem for me. Allah would have made a problem for me. Because haq is haq. And when they play their games, we still cannot respond that way. We've been told by Allah subhanahu wa very clear that you have to be patient and forbearing. They plan and Allah plans, not you plan. They plan and Allah plans and who's the best of planners. So you tell them, you deliver your message and you do it in the best way. Now, let's come to the main point of our talk tonight, which is how do we deal with the harsh attacks? Somebody comes to you, you on the Muslim, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. So you believe in Allah, don't you? Yep. How come you guys is terrorist? What are you going to say? How come you guys have to beat your wives? Or like one woman asked me, how come you men can have four wives and a woman can't have four husbands? <laughs> 